This time we have travelled to Estonia for another winter adventure, first taking in some of the sights and history of the capital Tallinn in its historic fortified old town, and then we'll explore further afield around the country by car to experience the beauty of the coastline at the Oahamar National Park. Take a ferry to the country's biggest island, Saramar, for some wonderful views and historic buildings, and then head inland stopping at Viandi and Tartu. It was a surprising few days in this Baltic country, so come along and find out why you should visit too. Tallinn is the capital located in North Estonia on the shore of the Gulf of Finland part of the Baltic Sea. It's one of the three Baltic state countries that include Latvia and Lithuania. Estonia has belonged to many different nations including the Danes, Swedes, Russians and Germans, changing its name a number of times. It is full of charm and history, particularly in the old town, dating back to 1219. It was called Revel shortly after the Danish conquered it and it would be known as Tallinn from 1918 when it gained its independence for the first time. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, the old town is reputed to be one of the best examples of a medieval trading city in Europe and you can see why. It's fairly small and easily explorable on foot and it's great fun getting lost in the winding back streets and alleyways. For the best free views, take a walk up Tompia Hill, also known as Cathedral Hill. This is Pikyal, the lovely cobbled street with its high walls starts our climb. Above are a number of beautiful government and embassy buildings. The hill splits the old town into two areas, the upper part with its castle and fortifications, elevated by about 50 metres, and the lower town which is more residential with shopping areas, restaurants and bars that we'll see later. You'll start to notice as we climb a number of fortified towers and defensive walls that encircle the old town. In medieval times there were 46 towers and 4 kilometres of walls. Today 26 are still standing and roughly 2 kilometres of wall remain. There are a few viewing platforms on top of the hill that can get very busy in high season but offer impressive views across the city and the harbour. St Olaf's Church you can see in the distance also offers great views if you want to climb the 258 steps. This 16th century church was once the tallest building in the world. This platform has steps besides so that you can walk down off the hill at this point, but we have more to see yet. Take your time to stroll and explore all the back streets on the hill as we did. They really are pretty and every now and again you come across a cute shop like this one selling amber jewellery. The Baltic region has the largest deposits of amber anywhere in the world.
Something that does dominate the hill is the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, a Russian Orthodox church that was named after the Russian warrior Saint Alexander. Russia captured Estonia in 1710, and it remained part of the empire until 1918. It's not as old as you might think being completed in 1900. You can spot the black domes that look a bit like onions all across the city. Inside are mosaics and the architecture is wonderful, but you'll have to take our word for it as filming and photography is not allowed in Orthodox churches. Opposite the church is a large section of the fortified wall, and it's here you will find the Kikindakak Fortification Museum. There are three museums here, and you can visit separately or pay to see all three at around 30 euros. Your entry allows you to walk along the fortified wall, visit the 15th century artillery tower, and then the 17th century underground bastion passages. It takes about three hours to see it all. Let's head down to the lower part of town now. Town Hall Square is the lively heart of the lower old town, a mix of colourful shops, cafes and restaurants. Even in winter, people enjoy sitting outside soaking up the sun with a coffee. Allen Town Hall Pharmacy is the oldest pharmacy in Europe that has continually operated on the same premises since 1422. We didn't know this on our visit. Make sure you pop inside for a look around and maybe visit the museum next door telling its history. The Gothic Talon Town Hall was built in the 1370s and is the oldest surviving one in Northern Europe. Today it hosts concerts and houses a museum on medieval Talon, but it's only open from late June to the end of August. The Visit Talon website is a good place to see what's on in the city and buy a Talon card. If you're staying a while, it's full of discounts on attractions. The colourful theme of the shops continues in the adorable cobbled streets around the square. Whether you want something to eat or an item to take home to remember your trip, you'll find something in this area.
The large three-story building in front of us was once three connected storerooms to house foreign products to sell at the market. It's now one of Tallinn's most famous restaurants, Old Hansa. Eating by candlelight and using ingredients from a medieval pantry, it's a real experience and we'll be back later as we had dinner here. The old meets the new just outside the old town in an area called Teleskivi and we're just heading there now. The main railway station is positioned between the two and whilst you cannot get to and from the airport by train, it does allow you to venture to other parts of Estonia or even head across the border into Latvia with trains to Riga from as little as 25 euros. Teleskivi Creative City is located in the former industrial complex of Tallinn, which houses galleries, quirky shops, various creative companies, startups and restaurants. We picked F. Huna for a light lunch in this old brick workshop. For an afternoon walk, we checked out the old abandoned Soviet amphitheatre on the shores of the Baltic Sea. This huge concrete structure was built in the Soviet era for the 1980 Moscow Summer Olympics as they needed a place to stage the sailing championships. Later it was used for concerts and events. You can see the port from here where the cruise liners dock and you can catch regular daily services to Helsinki, Finland. Prices from 25 euros for this two and a half hour trip. Many Finns like to make a day trip across to Tallinn. Also at the port you will find the Maritime Museum, which if you have time is supposed to be a great place to explore a submarine, view seaplanes and other nautical equipment. Trams run around the city and are a great way to get about. The airport is only three and a half kilometers away from the center and it's just two euros a trip. With the sun starting to set, we head back into the old town through the most iconic entrance, the Barbican Viru Gate. Having just experienced a really small taste of what Talon has to offer, it was time for dinner and we couldn't resist Old Hansa, which we'd booked in advance. The restaurant is set in the 15th century. The dining area has no electricity, just candlelight to set the mood, along with costumes and medieval music. Everything you eat is from ingredients you can find in a medieval pantry. They presented on platters similar to those of noblemen and merchants of the time. It makes for a great fun dining experience with some beer and schnapps to help us off to bed, ready for our early start to explore more of the country. Having picked up a hire car for a few days, we headed to Kulasara, the capital and most popular town of the largest island in Estonia, Saramaa. A convenient 27 minute ferry service whisks you across to the island. Do book ahead to avoid large queues to buy a ticket in high season. This time of year, the boat is pretty empty. It runs roughly every hour from 5.30 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. 20 euros each way for two people and a car.
Kurosara is a very pretty town that makes you feel like you've stepped back to a different era. In winter it is pretty sleepy, so perfect for quiet walks around the town centre, exploring its charm, beauty and the 14th century old buildings, or the lovely grounds of the park and the castle. The town hall was built in 1670 and still houses the local council and the tourist information office. Beside it is the old fire station that's been turned into a cute restaurant. Just opposite the town hall is the Way House, which was built in 1666. This is the only building of its type remaining in Estonia. It was used to weigh goods that were sold in the market square out front. It's now a bar. This windmill was built in 1899 and used until the beginning of World War II. It was restored in 1972 and was reopened as a coffee shop in 1974, which is still running as a restaurant today. When you go to book accommodation, you'll also notice many have spa facilities. Kurosawa is known as the world's most spa-dense town, with one spa location for every 10 inhabitants, giving it the highest number of spas per capita in the world. We picked the Johan Spa Hotel, with wonderful spa facilities, including a pool, steam room and saunas, an inclusive gourmet dinner option included for our one night stay. The most popular tourist attraction in Kurosara is the Episcopal Castle, the Bishop's Castle. You can reach it with a short walk from the town centre, through the cobbled lanes and through the park. The castle is said to be one of the best amongst medieval castles in the Baltic countries. Heavily fortified, it was built of dolomite stone blocks in the late 14th century and surrounded by a moat. The castle houses the Saramar Museum, the permanent exhibition about the history of Saramar, including seeing the well-restored interiors of the castle with both its religious and defensive quarters, torture instruments and dungeons. Sadly, it was closed during our visit. Nevertheless, it was just gorgeous walking around in the cold, crisp, sunny weather. The 
The construction of the stronghold was closely connected with the Estonians fight against the German feudals. In 1227, Saramar was surrounded by the German crusaders. In the 16th century, the bishops sold the castle to the Danes, since the outbreak of a war changed the political situation in the area, and it were the Danes who created the moat around the castle and therefore established a citadel. The town has a small sandy beach hidden by snow today and a waterfront to stroll with an interesting sculpture. It depicts Sir Toll, a mystical hero of the island and his wife Pirrit, carrying a boat laden with fish on their shoulders. They are said to protect the fishermen and islanders, they're friendly, warm-hearted and hard-working. Wishing we had more time to explore further around the island, our schedule took us back to the mainland, heading inland to the town of Vilandi. This little town is down in the southern forests of Estonia and is a mix of old and new popular in the summer for folk music festivals and medieval fairs, and by nature and culture lovers, boasting a small sandy beach and boating lake just outside the town centre. There are a number of educational institutions situated here as well. The pretty old town area has the colourful wooden and stone buildings that we've seen in other parts of the country. It was very quiet. In fact, I think we might have been the only foreign visitors exploring the area. Many places had shut up shop for the winter, which was a bit disappointing. One of the main attractions is the large ruins of Villandi Castle, once one of the largest in the Baltic region. As we walk through the park climbing up to the castle, you start to get great views of the frozen lake and beachfront covered in snow. It was built by the Livonian Order and construction started in 1224 on the site of a previous hill fort. You can get an idea of what it looked like from this map. Over the centuries, it would be extended and fortified further. In the early 17th century, it was badly damaged in the Polish-Swedish Wars and left to ruin. In the 18th century, the stone was plundered by the locals to help with construction work in the Velandi town. This striking wall, now used as the backdrop to many music festivals, was part of the convent house of Teutonic Knights who erected it in the late 13th early 14th century. In the grounds is a 50 metre suspension bridge that attracts visitors to cross over the 15 metre drop below. It was built in 1879 by the Riga company Felser & Co, but only positioned here in 1931 for the local lord of Tavastu Manor. It has been renovated many times, most recently in 1995, a fond favourite with the locals. As we concluded our walk around town, 
we also stumbled upon the Song Festival grounds, important to Estonia as it sang its way to restore independence in 1991. Continuing our road trip around Estonia, our penultimate stop before finishing at the national park is Tartu. This is the second biggest city of Estonia and has an old town with a similar feel to Tallinn. You can catch a train or bus here from Tallinn, taking about two hours and costing from around 15 euros. A river runs right through the centre of town and there are lots of bars and restaurants lining the streets of the city. Recognised as the intellectual capital of Estonia, it's where you'll find Tartu University and also the Estonian National Archives are housed here. The colourful town hall was built in 1789. A prison and a way house was located on the ground floor and the city government worked on the upper floors, which they still do today. The ground floor is now used by the Tartu tourist information. We didn't have a great deal of time in Tartu, but our short walk around included the incredibly slippery climb up through Cathedral Hill Park, elevating you above the old town to visit the remains of the Tartu Cathedral. Built in the 13th century, this brick Gothic church was heavily damaged in the Livonian War and since then it's not been in use. The University of Tartu Museum uses the areas that are still inhabitable to showcase the history of science and university education in the city. We were told to explore at least one of the national parks when in Estonia, so heading back towards Tallinn, we stopped at Lahima, the largest and oldest of the five national parks and easiest to visit from Tallinn. a conservation area of woodlands, wetlands and coastal ecosystems, it's a lovely place for a walk along the shores of the Gulf of Finland with 47,000 hectares of space to enjoy. We stayed the night in this tiny little settlement. Quiet and cute, it was mostly closed, but we were lucky to find one bar open for food, but service did finish at 6 p.m. Yagala Waterfall is a famous attraction just outside the boundary of the National Park and only 30 minutes from the centre of Tallinn by car. The water from the River Yagala runs over the 50 metre wide fall heading out to the Gulf of Finland. In winter it can freeze over, a spectacular sight, but it wasn't quite cold enough for us to see.
Our time in Estonia was a wonderful insight into the culture, history and nature of this beautiful country. Whilst many areas were closed for winter, we did really enjoy the peacefulness and less crowded popular areas of the capital and the island, which we'd love to come back and see more of in the summer. We hope this gave you a taste of the country as well. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again on the next adventure.